Hi folks, we're going to learn how to write for loops. For loops are used in Visual Basic to uh, make code execute over and over again. And just like uh, animating a picture box across the screen, uh, like we did in a recent assignment, uh, that's what we're doing here on this first exercise on this worksheet. So let's do it together. Fill in the blanks with me. If you wanted a picture box to move to the right across the screen, a total of 40 pixels. But each time you were moving just 10 pixels, the question is, how many movements of 10 would it take to get the whole distance 40 pixels? Well, 10 plus 10 plus... How many total movements? Ricardo? How many movements of 10 will it take to go a total of 40 pixels? Four. Four, right. Now the question is, this variable j, this silly loop variable j, how can we make it a uh, step four times? Well, the easiest way to, to do that would be to start at one, and then uh, tell it to go to two, then the three, and then the four. So there you go. There's the answer to exercise one. Now I do have to admit that somebody who wanted to be uh, extra uh, complicated about it, he or she could make J go from 11 to 14. J will uh, cause this for loop to execute and iterate four times, 11, 12, 13, 14. Count them. That's four uh, iterations, 11, 12, 13, 14. Or a person could be even more confusing than that. They could just start J at some arbitrary number like 56. 56, 57, 58, 59. And that person would put a 59 there, and he or she could argue, this is correct, Mr. Minnick. The, the picture box does move a total of 40 pixels because this J goes from 56 to 59, moving the picture box 10 pixels each time. I would likely take a point off or just hassle that student for writing code that's more complicated than it needs to be. So traditionally, and most simply, we always begin our J loops at 1 uh, for the rest of the school year. Please start at 1 when possible. There may be times when you can't, but when possible, start at 1. Let's move on to, to uh, talk about the second exercise. Here, we're supposed to complete a for loop that adds up integers from 1 to 4, and to store that total in a variable named sum. This has nothing to do with animating a picture box across the screen. So if you wanted to add up the numbers 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, of course you could use a calculator. You could probably do that in your head. But we want the, the power of the computer to do it. So we need a variable where we store the final answer. And I've already told you what variable name to use there. I told you to use the name sum. So where does the sum fill in the blanks? Well, you never put a variable name, well, you, usually you don't put a variable name here uh, on the line of code with the for loop. So uh, the word sum goes here. Now my question is, how can you uh, construct this for loop so it precisely adds up j when j is the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4? Well, because j is already perfectly positioned where it needs to be, just put a 1 and a 4 there, and you're finished. OK, well, that seemed simple enough. But let's trace this code to see if it really does correctly add up the numbers 1 through 4. First, let's uh, check to see what 1 through 4 it does indeed add up to. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. And 6 plus 4 is 10. So we should end up getting the answer of 10. When all is said and done, this code should uh, cause 10 to be stored in the variable sum. So now, let's trace it. Let's make some room here. I'll keep that 10 there. And let's trace it. And when I say trace, I mean make columns for each variable on your scratch paper and keep track of your code step by step. So let's begin to do that. The first time we hit this for loop, j starts at 1. So put a little 1 there. 
And uh, you can assume that sum begins at zero. It doesn't really say on this worksheet, but you can assume that sum begins at zero. Okay, so far so good. Now the line of code sum plus equals j. We've learned earlier in the school year that that's really just fancy, uh, actually sh a short notation for the whole line of code sum equals sum plus j. Oh, sorry about that. If you prefer to write out the code the long way, that's fine. But you're also allowed to uh, shorten it and use the plus equals operator if you wish. But here's how it, uh, it rolls anyway. You always execute the right-hand side of this assignment statement first. And because sum is currently 0 and because j is currently 1, you've really, uh, you really have to evaluate 0 plus 1, which of course is simply 1. And that 1 gets put into the variable name that's over here, which happens to be sum. So sum is overwritten with a 1. From now on, we're going to execute this code and just realize that whatever j is currently, it gets added into sum, because that's what the plus equals does. It adds it in. Next, we hit the word next. And the word next tells us to go back up to the top of the for loop. Sorry about that again. And at the top of the for loop, because there's no step amount typed out here, you're supposed to assume that the step is 1. In other words, j steps up by 1 each time it goes around the for loop. So let's bump j up by 1. And now we go through the loop again. This time, j isn't 1 anymore. j is currently equal to 2. So it's a 2 that gets added in to, to sum. So we reflect that on our scratch paper and we cross that one out and add and put a three there because we just added two into the variable sum. Next we hit the word next which means we loop back up around again and that means that we step j up by one and we now execute this line of code here. And that tells us to take j, which is currently 3, and add 3 into the variable sum. So cross that 3 out, make it 6. Hit the word next, go back up to the top, step j up by 1 to 4. And because it is 4, we do go through the loop again. This time, j is currently 4. Stay focused here. Because j is currently 4, we take a 4 and we, ah, sorry about that. We, we take a 4 and we add it into sum. Sum is now up to the number 10. We hit the word next. We go to the top. j does bump up to 5. It does step 1. And then we put the brakes on. We realize that j is above the upper boundary for this for loop, so we're supposed to stop. Do not execute sum plus equals j anymore. We're just finished. There's no more code to trace, and we circle our final answers here. And even though this worksheet did not tell you that you had to trace your uh, loops, this was uh, a good review of tracing a for loop. Now look at the net result of this. Sum ends up being 10. And that is indeed the total of what 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is. The beauty of this, the beauty of a computer, is that you can put any number in here that you want as the upper boundary of this for loop. And that number 400 now would cause all of the whole numbers between 1 and 400 to be added up in microseconds. I don't even have time to write it all out. All of that would be added up and stored in the variable sum that you could message box.show or do something with uh, later in the program. Very, very powerful. Having a computer at your uh, disposal 
when needing to add up a bunch of numbers on a number line. Okay, so far so good. Uh, we uh, wrote some code that adds up some numbers between 1 and 4. And we also moved a, a picture box in exercise 1. Look at number 3. Number 3 is really a takeoff of number 2, so I'm not going to do that. The only uh, difference in problem number 3 is that we have the number 12 here instead of the number 4 as our upper boundary for the range of numbers to add up. Hey, look at number 4. Number 4 is interesting. We're just writing a for loop that says I love VV. That's easy. 4. J. We always use J. It's tradition equals something to something, and don't forget the word next, and now we need a body statement. Well, what goes in the body of this? There's no variable sum. There's no a need to add up a bunch of J's in problem number four. This is simply messagebox.show. Indented for good style because this is in the body of the loop. Messagebox.show, we've been using message boxes since the first week of this class. Don't forget your double quotes inside here, uh, the parentheses. And that's it, folks. There's your answer to number four. Oh, I forgot. Uh, J needs a starting point and an end point. Whatever you put in here, J must go exactly five steps. It's, it's easiest to just put one and five there. If you're a rebel, you'd put something like 31 and maybe 35. But don't be a rebel because I'll probably take points off. So there you have it, guys. Uh, it's easiest just to take J from 1 to, to 5 in that question. It really was uh, ridiculous to put a 31 and a 35 in there. Hey, look at number 5. It's going to be a for loop again using J as a loop variable. But instead of starting at 1, because of the way the problem is worded, let's just start J at 2. And let's take it up to 8. But if we only want to add up the even numbers between 2 and 8, in other words, if we only want to add up 2, 4, 6, and 8 to a grand total and have the computer do it for us, then we can do the good old-fashioned sum plus equals j here like we did on a former exercise on this worksheet. Don't forget your word next. You always have to have the word next there. But the way to skin this cat is just to put step two. So think about it. If you're starting at two and you step two, that means you're going to four. And if you're at four and you're stepping two, then you're going to six. And if you're at six and you step two, you're going to eight. And that is all of the even integers between two and eight, two, four, six, eight. Go ahead and trace this for fun, even though it's not expected on this worksheet. Trace J, and don't forget J starts at two. You can assume that sum starts at zero and see what total you get for sum. Uh, you should get 20 because I just added this all up in my head. 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8. It should be 20. But go ahead and trace that one. Okay, and I leave you uh, with number 6 to do uh, on your own. It's, it's similar to number 5. Uh, 24 to 44. But all the numbers in this sequence, there is a way to do that one. You may have to change the step to something else. Have a good day.